There is a saying that in war, there are no unwounded soldiers. There is no way that any of our warriors can go through combat without damage. There is a recognition that no matter how righteous any particular combat may be, it still has a damaging effect on the soul. The International Military Pilgrimage to Lourdes gives people the opportunity for a ritual healing. It's so crucial to the mental, emotional, spiritual health of the individual. Everyone that comes to Lourdes feels a sense of spiritual healing, especially for military personnel who have gone through such terrible events. Their spiritual injury, their spiritual suffering is very deep and very real. Here, we bring our sick, our wounded, our ill, and our injured to join our brothers and sisters from the militaries of over 40 nations where they can, in fact, seek the healing and the peace that they need. Anyone who comes to Lord comes to the arms of the Blessed Virgin, who really is the heart of the church. And I think it's very, very important that our wounded warriors experience this healing and, and loving embrace. Warriors to Lords is an event for military personnel and their families, their caregivers. It takes place in Lourdes, France, every year in conjunction with the International Military Pilgrimage. And there's also some events that are arranged just specially for the American pilgrims by the Archdiocese of Military Services USA and the Knights of Columbus. The International Military Pilgrimage started at the end of World War II for the healing and re reconciliation of the warring powers. It was a moment of healing, of easing of tensions, of recognizing that in a common faith, even if there had been a separation of war, there could now be unity, there could now be a lived fraternity and also a common faith. The Knights of Columbus found partnering with the Archdiocese for Military Service such a natural complement. We've had a century of working with our military personnel, our military chaplains, and also helping veterans and helping the handicapped. The Knights of Columbus was formed not that long after the end of the Civil War. Many of the men in St. Mary's Parish, which is the birthplace of the Knights of Columbus, served in the Civil War in the Union forces. Back in 1917, the Knights of Columbus provided auxiliary chaplains for the U.S. forces coming to Europe during the First World War. The Archdiocese for Military Services and the Knights of Columbus walked together very easily in this type of endeavor. I lived in New York City uh, during 9-11. I was in fourth grade and I remember reading the newspaper. And I just remember at that moment thinking, uh, I'm gonna join the service. I wanted to make it a career. And the reason I wanted to make it a career was because it was the most uh, concrete way to serve. As a military spouse, early on I knew I was gonna have a lot of time to myself. I was going to have to sacrifice 
common things that most people for the first year of marriage get. They get their spouse at their side. I knew that I was gonna marry him on Saturday and by Monday he was going back to California to get ready to deploy to Afghanistan. While I was deployed, I was what's called the point man. So I was the first in line on every single patrol. For the first five months, I went on every single patrol. I didn't, I didn't hang back for one of them. It's four in the morning, we're getting all kitted up. I'm putting my gear on, I'm getting my weapon ready. My squad leader's name was Sergeant William Stacy, And uh, he comes up to me and he says, what are you doing? I was like, well, I'm getting ready, I'm the point man. He's like, not today. I want you on the machine gun, you're gonna stay on base. Will, uh, the squad leader ended up running point uh, for that patrol, the role that I normally took. And uh, he stepped on an ID on that patrol. When he got back from Afghanistan, he, are, he had PTSD. His injuries are not outwardly physical. He's not missing a leg. He's, it's internal. And a lot of people do not understand that. What I experienced most was a, an overwhelming sense of guilt that I didn't get to do my job, uh, that someone else had to do my job for me. They lost their life because of it. We moved from California to Lansing, Michigan, so that I could become an officer. But the minute that we got to Michigan, uh, my joints started to swell. I was either on crutches or in a wheelchair. I lost a tremendous amount of weight, 30 pounds in a month. We were concerned about organ failure. It, it, got, it got a little dicey. No one could really figure out what was going wrong. I ended up getting diagnosed with Crohn's disease, and at first it was a relief. Not because I was happy that I had Crohn's disease, but because I was just relieved that we had an answer. Illnesses catch you off guard. You're still, you're young and you just try to wrap your head around it. It challenged my, my belief in God uh, after seeing some of the things that human beings can do to each other. And then having something like Crohn's disease occur shortly after, it, cha it challenges just fundamentally your belief in a higher power. PTSD is a fear-based response. Somebody tried to hurt me. Moral injury is a guilt or shame-based response. The reality is killing an image bearer of God, you know, we are all created in God's image, goes against our design. It's bothersome to who we are. The only way to help a person with guilt is to speak grace and forgiveness and into a person's life. That's where pilgrimage is just brilliant for the purpose because that's what we're here for. People come to Lourdes all the time for physical healing, which is incredible. There's incredible stories of the miraculous healings. Just as legitimate are those, those wounds to the soul. So that, that first trip to Lourdes, we, I went as a pilgrim and I went expressly for healing. It was hard because in that moment, my faith wasn't, you know, as strong, but we were just really hoping for a miracle and that's where you can go and get one, so. To see the Basilica is, is something special in itself, just the, the, the magnitude of it. And then to realize that that which makes it special is not the Basilica, it's the water, something that simple. To go to the baths is to experience a different type of prayer. It's not just getting dunked in water. It's a continuous prayer, and everyone there is praying for you. I was in my third year at West Point. No warning, I just froze up and fell off the rock wall and had a seizure when I hit the ground. And they told me that I had a brain tumor the size of a golf ball. I lost the use of the right side of my body and I have speech difficulty. We came to the bath for physical healing. I had some 
spiritual trepidation. And the water is very, very cold. You pray, and then they dunk you. You really feel the Blessed Mother interceding for you. It's incredible feeling. In 2007, I had a parachute malfunction and really got busted up laying on a runway. On my second trip to Iraq, um, got blown up in an armored personnel carrier. I've been through seven surgeries so far, and I'm, I'm about to have another one, but I don't expect to come here and get a miracle. I just wanted to have the opportunity to, to dip my body into the springs and seek some healing to ease the pain I'm putting my family through as they watch me in the healing process after so many deployments in combat zones as a United States Army soldier. First trip to Lourdes, my knee started to swell, and we realized that being in a wheelchair was inevitable. My wife pushed me around for the duration of the trip. It served as a connection for me and my wife, that I had to humble myself to allow her to push me, and it became an honor for her to help me in that way. You can say in sickness and in health, but until that happens, you don't realize your marriage can grow. Being able to take care of my husband with the many things that he has, I saw it as a blessing. We get to spend four intense days in pilgrimage together. We ended up in front of the mural of Mary being crowned Queen of Heaven. We were offered to go and get our marriage vows renewed. It was a moment where we could just say, guess what, I love you still, and I want to keep going through this life with you. Looking into the eyes of the person you love and professing your faith and your commitment to them is something that only happens in marriage. God consecrating our marriage again, it was him letting us know that his presence is real. That was part of the healing for me. I didn't experience remission, but I did experience a deeper connection with my wife, um, with my other service members, with my own faith, and I think that was more rewarding and uh, more nourishing than, would, than any physical healing would have been. The emotional injuries that many people have, they live with, and they try not to allow other people to see it, either because they think it's a form of weakness, they don't want people to look down on them, or they just want to hide that from others because they think they can deal with it themselves. But when they come together and they see that other people have that same turmoil internally, they're able to actually relate to someone and talk to them in a location that is very spiritual and there is a great support structure there for them and they open up more than they are able to in their you know, current locations. I am son of a refugee mother from Vietnam and my father was a U.S. Marine recruited out of Vietnam. When my family came over after the fall of Saigon, the country gave my family freedom. So I wanted to join the military to repay that debt to the country. In 2003, I was deployed to Iraq where I had my first combat tour. My faith journey as a soldier uh, has fluctuated at times. When I find myself in combat, I tend to rely and speak to Christ more. So there's no better person to have as your, you know, your co-pilot or your wingman than Christ. In 2007, I was deployed to Afghanistan. And there I was approached by a brother Catholic who asked me if I wanted to become a Knight of Columbus. Being a Knight of Columbus introduced me to the Wars Lord's Pilgrimage. As a Catholic, this pilgrimage plays a large role on my spiritual life. I find it an honor to be able to lead the troops. We 
just attended the English-speaking Mass in the grotto. This is the place where St. Bernadette had the apparition of Mary. It's a great thing to have all the different armed service members there at the Mass uh, because the grotto is a perfect place for healing. I was one of the readers for the intentions. There is something that just evokes calmness and tranquility and an inner peace, and I think that's why people are drawn here. And I was able to look up um, at our Blessed Mother as I was kneeling after receiving the Eucharist, and it honestly was surreal. I couldn't believe that I was sitting where the Blessed Mother appeared to us. My first experience of knowing that God wanted me to be here was at the homily at the grotto. The priest said that God loves you just the way you are. And I broke down into tears um, just seeing that, just witnessing that truth. I converted to Catholicism when I was 16 years old, when I was in high school. I applied to Boston College. Uh, my parents said, get a scholarship or you join the military. I was a little bit too lazy to write, so I ended up joining the military instead. Being deployed is a stressful experience because you don't know where you're going. You don't know what you'll be doing. I was stationed in Djibouti, Africa. I was forward deployed in a combat area. I was just feeling a bit of distress of being in a high tempo area. Luckily, there was a military chaplain on base who I went to regularly, and he was a source of encouragement for me. I found out about Lourdes in the base chapel. I was hoping to find some answers into where does God want me to do after my deployment? When I got to the hotel, I found out that there was a group of American pilgrims there that were in the military. And the priest reached out to me and said, stay with me. He shared with me his joys of the priesthood and also his struggles. That left me with a great sense of courage. I returned back to deployment and uh, I had a newfound joy and hope. The most amazing thing that happened was I was ordained a priest, a priest of Jesus Christ. And uh, I wanted to return back to Lourdes in thanksgiving for the gift of my priesthood. I strongly believe in the old cliche of there are no atheists in a foxhole. When soldiers are in a battle zone or a theater of combat, when you're really in that need of help, there's always somebody that you call to, and it's always God. During my time serving in the Navy, I was not able to receive the sacraments for an extended period of time. It was a very uh, painful experience for me. And in the midst of that pain, I felt God saying, why don't you be a part of the solution? God was calling me to military chaplaincy. We send these military personnel into areas where they're in harm's way, and we tell them, you don't ever have the chance to go to mass. There's no possibility of confession. The unspoken hero is the chaplain who is there thick and thin. He goes on the front line with these men to serve. The role of the chaplain is to be a visible reminder of the holy. Being a Roman Catholic priest, one of the great privileges that I have is to be able to offer our service members the gift of the Eucharist, also the sacrament of reconciliation, because oftentimes our troops are looking for forgiveness for what they might have seen or had to do, especially when they're in combat. The Knights of Columbus make sure that chaplains come from other backgrounds, such as myself you know, as an Anglican. It is a Catholic pilgrimage destination. 
but it is open to people from all different backgrounds, as long as they're wanting to come and participate. They make a point of ensuring an ecumenical nature. When you come to a shrine like Lourdes, this is a wonderful way to understand Catholic devotion to the Mother of God, and for us to share in their commitment and their understanding of the faith. I believe heavily that motion creates emotion. So many of these people that go, they intermingle with each other and they go through all these different ceremonials and it builds this emotion that inspires everyone. It inspires them physically, mentally, and spiritually. It creates a vibe throughout that is very positive, brings them closer to the Lord, and is very patriotic. This military pilgrimage witnesses a very fundamental fact. Our Catholic values promote a patriotism that respects the patriotism of individuals in other countries. For me, because I've left the country 12 times, you know, I see a lot of these soldiers from different armies. Usually we're standing in the tent receiving a battle brief or getting ready to move out on the mission, and they got their team, we got their team. But we're, we're all the same, no matter what color uniform you are, what color you are. At the end of the day, we're soldiers, and we all do the same thing. Well, I, I can tell you that from the ceremony we just went to, from the sound of the wars, being an NFL fan, there can be no less than 20,000 people down in there. I can't even put it into words, like, for real. Like, I'm so stoked, and uh, I'm blessed. I am blessed. The Sports Challenge was an opportunity for us to compete against other nations on an obstacle course, and uh, we had to work as a team. I really didn't know what I was getting into. I ran for about a mile and a half carrying another individual. He had to do these activities like throw a rock, do push-ups at this place. It was really fun. That was fun to kind of just hang out with everyone. It was physically intense. Uh, it, was tough. <laughs> it was a workout. It was truly a workout. We did make it to the finish line thanks to the support and the brotherhood that we shared with one another. I had a very powerful experience at Lourdes, and I felt that by going back as a trip leader, I'd have that opportunity not only to share my own testimony, but just to give them that same space and guidance that I received. One year to go from wheelchair to walking is a pretty big deal, um, and that's not, that's not lost on me. I, I was very grateful for that. The Stations of the Cross in Lourdes, there's a certain magnitude to them. I went up with a gentleman named Chuck Baldinger, I got the honor of pushing him around in a wheelchair to go to the baths, and he chose to walk the Stations of the Cross. Not only am I going and seeing what Christ went through, but I'm seeing what Chuck's going through as well, and I'm seeing him push. So you start and you're walking uphill, and it's extremely steep. You connect as a community with this idea of suffering. And I remember getting to the end of the stations and really feeling just a beautiful connection to Christ's suffering. And I understood that he gets it, that he understands what it means to be human. He made helping someone and being helped holy. He made mourning and mourning others and moving beyond it holy. But any time that I feel like I'm in a spiritual desert and I'm being tested, I can go back to the stations. vigil at Lourdes was amazing. We were with thousands of people singing Ave, Ave Maria, and praying the rosary. You see Mary 
right there with the flags up above. And you kind of see that the borders are broken. Our Lady opens your heart just a little bit. With everybody praying in all the different languages that the rosary was said in, just reminded me of how the disciples went out and spoke all different languages and touched so many pe different people. Seeing the candles during the procession is wonderful. In the darkness of the night, we see the light. We can see the light of Mary shining. Walking along in that mass crowd, in that silence, in that continual prayer, showed me the beauty of our Catholic faith, a beauty that you won't see else in this world. Throughout the Bible, everyone goes to a mountaintop to find a deeper connection with God. And Lord's, it's a spiritual mountaintop where you go to, you can hear him speak to you and you can speak to him as well. This is a place where peace can be found. And coming here just really allowed myself to get a little closer to God. Ever since becoming Catholic, I heard about Lourdes, and it is an answer to prayers that I was able to come. Whether you're suffering emotionally or physically, you receive God's grace, and I think that's why people are drawn here. When you go to Lourdes, you can find a brotherhood beyond boundaries, beyond faith boundaries, beyond country boundaries. You, you find the humanity in us being on this earth that God's blessed us with. You don't go to Lourdes because you are Catholic. You go to Lourdes because you're human searching for healing. I showed up there. I was embraced by a community of military service members who looked out for me and accompanied me on this spiritual journey. And I felt a connection with them. It is giving you the moral courage and the spiritual strength to address the issues and problems of your life, whether they're physical, mental, moral. That's the healing power of Lourdes and the Blessed Mother.